Photon diffraction is a central mystery of subatomic particles. Some observations of light, such as black body radiation, reject the wave and space model of light. These are called particle models. Other observations, such as reflection and diffraction, reject the traditional particle model of light. <clears throat> These are called wave models. To have a better model of light, one of two types of models need to be created. Either create a wave model of the particle experiments or create a particle model of the wave experiments. The challenge of uniting the Newtonian and quantum worlds is to develop laws of motion of photons that obtain the diffraction experimental observations. Sir Isaac Newton, in the 1730 edition of his book Optics, speculated light is a stream of corpuscles, that is, discrete particles of matter. The ether overtakes the rays and directs the corpuscles' path. The ether is a continuous medium that supports wave action. The ether grows denser with distance from the particles and causes gravity. That is, the corpuscles of light change the ether and the ether directs the corpuscles. Newton was suggesting light is the effect of two entities agents in all experiments, like a rock creating waves in water. This is not wave-particle duality. Young's experiment in 1801 directed incoherent light from a source such as a flame through a small pinhole or slit in a mask. The light that passes through the slit showed no evidence of diffraction. The light that passes through the slit is allowed to impinge on a second mask with two narrow closed slits. The light that passes through the two slits produces an interference pattern on a distant screen. That is, coherent light is, by definition, light that produces a diffraction pattern on a screen after passing through a slit or pinhole. Coherence is obtained by the pinhole in the first mask in Young's experiment, by light traveling a long distance, such as from a star as seen in the airy disk pattern in telescope images, and from a laser. Because the only explanation of coherence has been a wave action, diffraction and interference has been assumed to be a wave phenomena. This video will develop a particle model of light, present a computer simulation program for light diffraction, and present the results of a new experiment that rejects wave models of light. An amateur scientist can do this experiment with little cost. Democritus postulated the existence of a smallest piece of identical matter particles. These are Newton's corpuscles. <clears throat> light has many different colors or energy levels. Therefore, photons cannot be the corpuscles. That is, the photon is an emergent entity of the corpuscles and gravitational ether agents. The number of corpuscles in a photon determines its energy. The simplest structure we can conceive of is a column of corpuscles. So here is the column of corpuscles. Each one of them introduces a wave into the ether. The math of the waves is the same as for a linear array of dipole antennas. Experimenters have performed single photon at a time in diffraction experiments. The single photon between mask and screen is directed by the gravitational ether waves. The problem noted by the Bohm interpretation is where does the pilot wave originate? The diffraction pattern maxima and minima are at different locations for different photon energies, a spectrographic effect. Therefore, the photon must be the source of the ether wave. Here we have a single photon between the mask and the screen. It's emitting gravitational waves, and these waves are being reflected by each atom in the screen and in the mask that then form a gradient at the photon, and that directs the photon. You will note that the slit has no waves going back, and therefore 
the gradient here is changed and directs the photon and accounts for the, the dimensions of the slit. Photon's effect on the gravitational ether. This is the direction the photon is moving. That's angles to the side. Here is the interference pattern. I've labeled these minima A, B, C, and D for future use. You'll note that if a pho uh, photon is here, Newton suggests that the gradient will direct it to the minima. So the first step for a particle model is to explain coherence in terms of particle action. Start with photons positioned randomly and traveling in the same direction. Like Bohm interpretation, each photon has a definite position and momentum. After several hours of allowing the simulation to work, we see voids starting to form. We also see the photons are lining up on lines whose angle to the direction of motion correspond to the letters we saw in the previous minimum. If a mask is simulated, a diffraction pattern is projected on a screen. If other matter is added, such as a detector, the gravitational ether is changed, which destroys the diffraction pattern, as quantum mechanics suggests. If we trace the paths of the single photons in the simulation, we start here and release the single photons directed straight to the screen. The mask is a reflective barrier, which then reflects gravitational waves back to the photon, and that changes the photon's direction away from the center of the slit. Note that the photons that come through the slit near the top side are directed towards the bottom of the screen. Photons through the slit in the bottom are directed towards the top. You also notice that the central peak is beginning to be formed here, as well as some secondary peaks. Also notice, the photons here that are coming through the slit are more intense than the photons coming through the middle. The photons coming through the bottom side of the slit are also more intense. Experimenters have noted that the brightness near the slit edges, therefore, this simulation explains an observed effect which no other model explains. The equipment for the experiment is we have a laser pointer. I have a paper clip holding the button down so the laser light will stay on. I took business cards, cut out a hole in the business cards, and placed a piece of aluminum foil over the hole. I then cut a slit in the aluminum foil. Uh, it's, it's important for the experiment that the mask be as thin as possible and that there be no index or refraction kind of concerns. There's the double slit. The laser directs a coherent light at a first mask with a slit in it. That produces a diffraction pattern here, and we have a second mask then that selects a portion of the diffraction pattern, and then several meters distance we have a screen where the image of that is impinged. The position of the second mask. This is the slit width, and you'll notice the width is about half the distance between the first minima around the central peak. There's the center line, or zero, of the experiment, and here's what is projected on the screen. Therefore, this light here is coherent, and it's doing what coherent light is supposed to do. Perhaps someone with a photon counter could do this experiment for better definition between the peaks. This then is the result of the simulation of this experiment, and you see that we have a Fraunhofer diffraction pattern with the minima where they're supposed to be and with the maxima where they're supposed to be. The second part of the experiment is to change the position of the second mask so that one 
edge of the slit is over the central peak. The other edge of the slit is over the first minima. And this is the result on the screen. You will note that the maxima is slightly to the right of the zero and declines as it goes left. This is a little spur that is actually part of the central maxima. And here are the two secondary peaks. There is the center of the experiment, the zero. Here is the peak to the right of the zero, and it declines to the left. This is the little spur that we saw, which really is part of the central peak, and these are the two secondary maxima. For the double slit, we position one slit over the central peak maxima, and the other slit over the first minima. When I change the camera exposure, we can see that the central peak has the interference fringes. Change the exposure back so it's detecting the secondary peaks and you see that they are there also. This is the simulation. Central peak, interference fringes, secondary peak. Wave models of light predict the brighter diffraction pattern should be on the left rather than on the right or spread across both sides of the screen. Therefore, this experiment rejects wave models of light. The suggested simulation program is a very good fit for the actual results. Therefore, this particle model of light is consistent with experiment. Note this particle model is linked to general relativity where matter warps space and space directs matter. The gravitational ether in quantum mechanics is the medium in which the wave function waves. That is, the waves are real. This links the smallest to the largest in the universe, and that is a base for a theory of everything.